If you spent any amount of time on a job site, you know organization is key. One of the ways I stay organized is with my Brady Labeler. The only problem is I have another battery to maintain. Wouldn't it be nice if I could just grab my M18 battery and pop it in here and hit print? Neat. If you would like to do the same, you could wait for these two companies to do a collab, or if you don't want to die of old age, you can keep watching and learn how to do this yourself. This is a Brady BMP71 label printer. There are two options to power the thing. The adapter, which gives you 18 volts, and the battery pack, which gives you 12 volts. This battery pack is a nickel metal hydride, so ew. This is why we are gonna try and sub in the Milwaukee Red Lithium style battery pack. There's another couple of ways you can go about doing this. The first being directly replacing the 12 volt battery with the M12 battery pack, since it's 12 volts. We could potentially plug this, with an adapter of course, into the power plug for the existing battery that this thing was designed to take. That would require a little bit of mechanical design to get this to snap in nicely and still allow it to sit well on a table. The other option would be to take the M18 style battery pack, fitting it in this nice little groove here, which allows it to sit up as well. Doing that would require an adapter to go into the adapter port, essentially replacing this. That would require us to monitor the voltage on this and make sure we don't overdraw from it and destroy our battery. Whereas if we went the M12 route, we might be able to utilize the circuitry in here to monitor this voltage and ensure it doesn't drain it. However, we of course couldn't use the charging portion of it since this is lithium and what it was charging was nickel metal hydride. The path of least resistance to me seems to be the M18. So that's the way I'm gonna go. You're gonna need your BMP71, an M18 battery, some wire, circuit protector, just a fuse, the adapter for the M18 battery, a circuit that allows you to monitor the voltage so you don't overdraw from the battery, a T20 screwdriver, and likely a pliers. If uh, there's something that I missed, I'll put it up on screen, but I'm pretty sure this is all I'll need. Oh, I saw these screws here, they're all T20s, so we'll just go ahead and pop these off. So this bad boy pops off and it looks like it's held in with a single ribbon cable. So we'll just go ahead and detach that. All right, let's see, this comes off, I guess. Let's see here. Oh, this is actually a really nice working layout here. Look at that. All right, I'm just gonna, wow, this'll, this is gonna be a breeze. Looking at this here. This is the power port. That, so that plugs into here, which then in turn feeds into this bad boy right here, which then goes to the main board over there, or just whatever the hell that is. I don't know, there's just a nice, nice very convenient three port plug going into there. So that's kind of nice. There's a screw holding it in there. Now we can lift this little prong here. And a slider on that, I think. Okay, there we go. Come on. I know you come out. I can feel it. You can, oh, yep, it just slides right out. <laughs> In order to properly set the cutoff for this guy, we're gonna have to figure out what voltage that we should cut it off at. And how we're gonna do that is we're gonna take the voltage of a dead battery, at least what Milwaukee considers a dead battery. That way we can set that on this one to turn it off, make sure we don't over drain this. So pop this on, get a voltage, 15.9 volts. We'll 